Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer, coming to you with my content genius of a son, Michael Rivers. And we are reacting to Sarah Boone. And uh, Sarah Boone is in Florida in custody. Remember, we reacted to her uh, interrogation a little while back. And now she's kind of heading for trial. And I want this is kind of an episode about managing a difficult client because I guarantee you she's. And remember, she put her uh, boyfriend in a flipping suitcase and then he died in a suitcase i don't know why you would get in him freaking because we were playing hide and seek but this is brought to you by esign.com esign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business and let's say for example you're sitting in jail and you're on your seventh lawyer and now you got to send over another agreement you got to sign it or you want to send a letter to the judge you want to have the judge acknowledge it and e sign it well all you do is uh download the app you get three free signatures a month and uh and you're able to get that done while you're sitting in the comfort of your own jail cell now i use it all the time but i'm not doing it from a jail cell i use it in uh when i send a retainer agreement to somebody who is in either a remote you know like they're out of state or they just can't come into the office for whatever reason but it's also it's a time saver too because if you have a deal you need to close right now you know whether it's real estate or whatever it is you send somebody an e-sign document and you can get that done really quick so e-sign or no one signs so now let's talk about um so this is a pre-trial she had a couple of weeks ago now if you remember she <laughs> did that interrogation and that was one of the worst interrogations i've ever seen in terms of you know self snitching and and painting yourself into a corner sarah wound up trying to create this bullshit story that she was in a uh, you know game playing mode with her with her ex and then they f wind up finding this uh recording fuck you that's what she tells him and he's he's trapped in a suitcase and he can't get out and he's just like can't breathe one of the things why you can't breathe in a situation like that is because if you're compressed and now you you're only getting so much oxygen into your lungs because you're you know you can't expand your your lungs and so you don't die right away but you die of asphyxiation and you die because you know you, you can't expand your lungs and pretty soon before you know it um you just pass out so let's and, and now she's she is i guarantee you she is the world's worst um client but she's let's see watch her in court all right let's go ahead and call up miss boone's case mm -hmm. she's got no defense Mind you. Florida versus Sarah Boone, 2020 CF 2603, State of Florida. Getting the on behalf of the state. Defense. Frank Bankowitz. Let's go ahead and swear Ms. Boone in. May you please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you shall give shall be the truth, only truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Morning, ma'am. Tell me your name and your date of birth. Sarah Boone, October 10th, 1977. All right, we're here for pretrial conference today. Mr. Cacciatore, where do you stand in preparing to proceed forward? This is just pro forma. This is a pretrial just to kind of determine where, okay, where we at, what are issues we have to figure out. State's ready, Your Honor. Mr. Bankwitz, where do you stand in regards to preparing for, I'm for sorry, trial? The defense is not ready. We're requesting a continuance. Uh, we are having difficult time finding an expert who is willing to work for uh the now to get an expert from samsonite um or actually i don't know what kind of expert he's looking for probably a medical examiner um probably not a luggage expert see rates and um so i'm still I, I, it's an essential part of the case basically it's never been uh initiated before by any of the prior attorneys that i'm aware of and the prior attorneys she's fired like seven of them i mean this is her seventh lawyer six or seven or something like that and when somebody i when everybody somebody comes to me and they've got another lawyer i generally don't take the case because if they're firing that lawyer guess what they're going to point their fingers at me and they're very 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 difficult especially if they're like especially like third or fourth or fifth lawyer 
I won't take that kind of case. And I also don't like to take cases from other lawyers. You know, if somebody's, you know, if I'm representing somebody, I, I call the other lawyer and I say, somebody, so-and-so contacted me. You know, it's kind of a gentlemanly thing to do. Odd terms, what's the nature? What's the field? Spouse that, defense. defense. Okay. Oh. Statutorily, we have to give the state notice uh, and sufficient time and name it. So basically, that's, that's her only defense is that, um, you know, the batter woman syndrome. Expert in the essential elements that they'll be testifying to. The other thing is, despite the rates, they might say that it just doesn't fit. So they, they're trying to find an expert that will say what they need them to say. Mr. Cacciatore, what's your position in regard to uh, the defense request for continuance? Um, I would have no objection to uh, another role. So, Mr. Bankwitz, how deeply have you plumbed the depths of the pool of experts in this field to, to find out? So the judge wants to know, look, is this just, are we going to get here, you know, like continue this case and then we're going to be right back here in a month or six weeks or whatever and you still won't have an expert or are you really on the track to finding one? Um, or find one who's willing to work for the JAC rate? Well, I've actually talked to three and uh, they don't have contracts with JAC and are not willing to work with JAC. Uh, and I, I've made some other... <laughs> and the JAC is just their, their court-appointed rate. Inroads uh, with uh, battered woman shelters trying to get their psychologists, you know, who'd be willing... To, Problem is willing to testify, basically. Problem is, is that she stuffed him in a fucking suitcase. <laughs> That's one of the problems that we have. And it's unprecedented. And when you take, you know, there's such deliberation when she sits there and she's telling him, fuck you, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And then she says, That's my name, don't wear it out. I mean, she doesn't sound like a better woman. She sounds like somebody who's pissed off. And maybe she was. Maybe she was a better woman. But generally speaking, to avail yourself of that defense, you have to be under the threat of, of some physical harm. You can't just uh, – and she does not sound like she's the least bit afraid at that moment. Okay. Uh, because of the concern about the compensation rate for testimony? Well, that's one of the things uh, – <laughs> And the other thing is the facts really bother them because they can't say what I want them to say. And to be honest with you, this case has had so much notoriety uh, that people don't want to be involved. Okay. And she's probably such a pain in the ass, nobody wants to, to stick their neck out for her. So, Mr. Banquist, I'm certainly willing to give you additional time based on my understanding of the case. I understand why that would be a defense the defense would want to explain. Because they don't have any other defense. When all of a sudden you hear a judge say, we're going to give you some more time, you kind of go like this. Because you really need the time to... Or, you know, a speedy trial, people talk about a speedy trial. A speedy trial never helps a defendant in homicide. You want as much time as possible to prepare. Generally, it's 60 days after your not guilty plea. You're entitled to have um, a speedy trial. However, when you're sitting there um, in jail and you're, you're not calling your lawyer all the time or you are calling your lawyer, he may not be answering, she may not be answering. And so you're kind of languishing there and so you, you get antsy. But a uh, speedy trial never helps a defendant. About potentially presenting... What I'm not sure about is whether the inability to find an expert forever delays the trial of the case. I, I wouldn't expect it to be a forever delay, Judge. Their new date is in July, by the way. Uh, and they, you know me better than that. Mr. Cacciatore, well, I just want to make sure everyone in the room understood that, you know, I'll give reasonable amounts of time to prepare a defense. The defense entitled to an adequate defense, but they're not necessarily entitled to the exact defense they would prefer to have if resources run limited. So, uh, 
Mr. Katsuri, remind me, where are we as far as lining up your various homicide cases for trial? I know we have some things set to go to trial in the June. Would you agree that if, in fact, you retain an expert and they're going to opine specifically on Ms. Boone's state of mind at the time of the incident, that that opens the door for the state to oh, also most have an expert? All right. Most definitely. So what he's talking about there is if you have somebody that puts on the character of the defendant, because the character of the defendant is not admissible by the state initially, but if you put on character evidence of your client, in other words, her mental state was X or Y or Z, which is what they're talking about here, the state then has the ability to then, okay, well, then we had our own expert and this is what we think. And so now you, they can rebut the character evidence that they're talking about. So here's what I am, and Mr. Castro, let me ask you this. Let's say that that turns out not to be an issue. We're not gonna have two experts. How long would it otherwise take you to present your case? Just rough idea. I would say three days. And other than this potential defense, Mr. Bankowitz, and is that including jury selection, Mr. Kachatori? Uh, no, uh, well, I, I, probably three and a half days for jury okay. selection. All right. And Mr. Bankowitz, uh, other than this potential defense, if the state, if we picked a jury in one day, the state presented their case in two and a half days, how long do you anticipate a defense? presentation would be at this point. say at least three days. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, so let's kind of look at, so that's kind of the, the trial and uh, this is real world stuff. This is exactly how things go in court. Now let's, let's look at what she's been doing behind the scenes. Sarah Boone sends a strongly worded handwritten letter to her public defender and judge ahead of her coming trial. I hate it when clients write letters to the judge they do it it's and it's usually somebody who's just a pain in the ass and we have clients that are pains in the asses sometimes and i guarantee you she is not easy to deal with and, bec and it's because she's a narcissist there's nothing about her case that's super complicated i mean maybe the the you know her state of mind is complicated but she doesn't really have a defense other than that. And so one of the biggest complaints is that, oh, I can't get a hold of my lawyer. My lawyer's not doing anything. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. This just sounds like revenge. It doesn't sound like she's trying to, like she's, it doesn't sound like she's, she's not in any danger. Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah. And she's laughing. She, you know, she does sound drunk. Cute. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Can you, I mean, how cold? How absolutely cold is she? Closer look inside the mind of Sarah Boone through a series of handwritten letters to the court from the Orange County Jail. The first letter came in April 2022, when Boone wrote to her case's judge about her representation. Boone argued her defense attorney did not communicate with her about a continuance in her case. More letters followed in October, November, and December of last year, with another being sent in January 2023. Throughout this time, Boone's representation has switched at least four times for both. And we know now that it's two, at least two more times, so that I think she's on her seventh lawyer. Reconcilable differences between the attorney and client and conflicts of interest. Boone's most recent letter, dated March 22, 2023, is addressed to her current defense attorney, Frank Banowitz. The letter reads in part, quote, Mr. Banowitz, this is my third letter trying to reach you over another almost six-week period now. The same two... You have to be available to your clients. I mean, you just have to be able to. And, uh, and my guess is that she has talked to the... That she's just trying to set this up, saying that this is ineffective assistance to counsel numbers you've given me still do not work. The one number, your personal cell, goes to voicemail directly and doesn't even ring. I had a client once that he would call me 
all the time, like 12 times a day. I mean, it just over and over and over and over again. Finally, I said, you call me twice a day. You can call me once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Because, you know, there's nothing going on in your case every single day. I mean, sure, we have developments. We have this. We have this. We have this. And uh, but you, you don't you have to be available for your clients, but you don't have to take their shit. I've had this number since you personally gave it to me back in July 2022 upon your appointment as my attorney by the court. Not working still eight months later. The other number rings and rings and rings until it automatically disconnects me. Not working either. This is also the number you continuously tell me it just needs to be activated. Please activate. I even in my description to speak with you had an outside caller try to reach you on my behalf who tried calling your office three times over the last almost three weeks, leaving a voicemail each time with no reply. See, when you have a public defender, you know, public defenders get a bad rap. They're good lawyers. They're in court all the time. They they have a good heart. Um, the problem is, is that they're just too busy. I mean, they just have too many cases and and they're very difficult to get a hold of sometimes. But it doesn't mean that you you got to go see your client, especially if they're in custody. We're both hoping you are able to reply to her email she sent today as another form of trying to communicate with you. I've exhausted my resources and am again just sitting here waiting for you to contact me in whatever way you are able. And as soon as possible, please. Time sensitive matters are at hand, as I have made you aware of previously verbally and in my letters. I know you have attempted to schedule the minimum 15 minute at this point, there's a break in the letter. There may be a missing sentence or page. It picks back up by reading, quote, my pretrial conference I found out is now on 3-31-23, which you said previously for whatever reason, I'm unable to attend any of these conferences. How am I supposed to know what's going on and what you are reporting? And it's frustrating for a defendant, you know, when they're sitting in custody and they don't know what's going on. But these letters to the court, it just, I, I, I've had clients, you know, write the court. They think I'm doing something wrong, or they they just don't uh, like the process, or they feel the heat, and so they're trying to muddy up the water. So that's kind of what this sounds like. And what is being discussed between all other parties except me, the main component in my case, especially if we, in a still unestablished attorney-client relationship, are not in regular or proper communications with one another? Why can I not be in attendance and participate in my PTC? meaning pre-trial conference. Well, she was there at the pre-trial conference. You know, anytime something happens in court, that's called a critical stage. And a defendant has the right to be present at all proceedings that happen on the record in court. How else am I to be kept updated in real time and actual minutes during the conference if not there myself? I have no way of knowing anything if not updated by you, my attorney, and do not have a computer to use slash view myself. Help me understand, please. How can Court TV, different news channels, and even professional YouTubers attend my PTC? Again, hey, I was there. <laughs> in pretrial conference. And I cannot. How? I'm sure one of the other parties can help me with updates since they will all be in attendance for me also, should you be unable to provide. Why can I not be included in my PTC for my case? I'm sure also everything from the conference collected from everyone else will be vomited all over the internet just like everything else had been. Shouldn't she sound like a wonderful person? <laughs> but she's frustrated and can add even more dysfunction and ignorance to my prejudgment already made by the world in the great court of public opinion. I would like to be part of all this, seeing as it all pertains to me. Please, it is my right. So many questions, concerns piling and piling up from not being. Can you see why she has gone through four or six or however many lawyers she's gone through in the past? And that's where the letter cuts off. On Friday, Boone's trial date was again pushed back from an April 10th start date to July 24th. Her status hearing was also delayed until July 11th. Right now, she's being held in the Orange County Jail without bond, where she's been for more than three years. So she's been there for three years. You think about that. I mean, that's got to get frustrating. You'd want your trial. But at the same time, guess what? So this has just been our little update on, on Sarah Boone. 
Um, she's going to be held over in, and she's been, I mean, this happened three years ago. And so it, it, if you watch the callousness with which she sits there and laughs and she's drunk, you know, that, that really takes away, in my opinion, the, the victimhood because she seems like she is the perpetrator at that point. But if she gets a good psychologist to say that, that you know, she was driven to this and um, – but how do you get somebody in a suitcase? You know, and why didn't she – why didn't she call the cops? I think she – actually, she did call the cops the next day. So we'll, we'll continue to follow this because this is going to be an interesting and, – and I just don't see her getting out of prison anytime soon. So I'm Bruce Rivers. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please, is that my god?